Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Start it. <laughs> Start it. All right. So I guess today I'm uh, going to take us in yes. on the new episode of the Korean Cowboys podcast. Welcome back. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed our new setup that we got going on. What do you think, Aaron? Did you like the first episode? I did. Um, I liked the first episode. I definitely like the setup more than like the other episodes. Just me personally. Okay. What else did you like about it? Uh, I just liked how it was. I kind of like just free format where we were just talking about whatever the hell we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And we gave like our honest opinions on certain things. So I thought it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully our viewers enjoyed this format as well. I think we're just going to keep this format for a little bit. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. So I, I put together most of like the, the talking, whatever we talked about and stuff. And it was a little bit dry in some parts, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, we all love a good feel good story, but um, I know you guys want the juice. You guys want it raw and uncut, you know, like, Give us the meats. Yeah. Raw and uncut. Uncircumcised sushi. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's <so> stupid. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So uh, we're going to just kind of experiment with things. You know, our lovely guest, Greg, right? He told us to keep trying things until it actually works. Yeah. So I mean, YouTube. like. And that's what we're doing because, you know, we done switched it up a whole bunch of times. We're only uh, one episode into our comeback. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, we'll be mm-hmm. trying a lot of new things. Also, hopefully you guys. I look forward to that. But yeah, and I, and we're gonna bounce ideas off of each other. Like Aaron told me the other day, not to talk over him. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we all need to coexist. It's in a habitat, you know. Um, well, speaking yeah. of the second episode of Korean Cowboys, how was your week? Uh, I didn't really do too much. A lot of driving around. I'm getting used to driving around. You know, uh, driving so in. Cute. So I bought a car, right? I think I, I think I told you guys this. I bought this car. And driving in Seoul is not like driving in the States or something. Bum blank nowhere, Alabama, where I got my original American license, right? Alabama, so, wow. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't want to talk about my time when I was there. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, driving around in Seoul can be really, really, really hard, you know. And I live in Gangnam, which is probably the most busy part of Seoul. And uh, it takes a lot of getting used to. But you know what? I'm a driving master now. I put my skill somewhere at 9 out of 10. Yeah, okay, 9 out of 10. I'm my almost ass. to Aaron's 9.2 out of 10. Almost. We were, ta- we were talking, you were, telling, you were telling us a story about uh, yesterday when you were driving your AC issue. Do you want to expound upon that? All right, so, you know, viewers? it's getting a little warm, right? And listen, <laughs> I am used to just rolling down the window for some cool air. I didn't realize that there's a little button next to the AC that has a, uh, a snowflake on it that actually turns off the fan and turns on the AC. So I thought my car was broken. I was about to call the service center, but it was, you know, late already. So I was what like... What did you say? You turn off the engine and turn it on like three times? Two or three. I don't remember. Not that it... Not that that really matters. Anyway, the point is, is much <laughs> like the Korean cowboys and, 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 you know, learning what to do. You know, we have a learning curve. And I have a learning curve with my car. Um, I still actually, like if I got in an accident, say God forbid, I wouldn't know who to call. Call your insurance company. I guess. What do you mean? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll take it as it comes. So yeah, I'll learn someday. All but, right. Um, so what are we going to be talking about today? Well, you know, I, <laughs> my segue. Yes. <laughs> but uh, what do you call it? So when I went back to the States this last time, there was a lot of like episodes. You know what I mean? There was a lot of, a lot of things going on and and one of the pastimes now that I have with my dad, and I had it with you too, kind of, when we were living together, was like watching comedy shows. Yeah. Comedy specials, right? Like stand-up? Yeah, like stand-up mm-hmm. comedy. Yeah. So I got really into watching stand-up mm-hmm. comedy with my dad, and and the first person that I went to was, uh, you know, the one and only, Dave Chappelle. The GOAT. He's the GOAT. He's, I think, personally, the funniest living comedian right now, I think. Who do you think is the... The funniest comedian, like dead or alive. Okay, top comedians, uh, t- comedians top three list. Each of us, let's go. Yeah. All right. So I think for me, definitely Dave Chappelle's up there. Okay. Joan Rivers. Okay. Definitely up there, one of my favorites, and probably another oldie like Eddie Murphy. Mm, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy yep. in his prime, untouchable. I've seen some skits of his from like the '90s that are so. Funny. If you guys don't know, there he has he does a skit about a hamburger, um, and how his mom used to say we got McDonald's at home, so she would go home and make him a hamburger, <laughs> and huh? it is so funny. You have to watch. It's really old, but yeah. What about your like top three? My top three, uh, of course, the goat Dave Chappelle. Um, I like I like Bill Burr. I think okay, Bill yeah, he's funny. funny. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, someone older would be like Eddie Murphy or like Richard Pryor. Okay, Richard Pryor. Um, who else? I, I like a lot of comedians. Um, I think Kevin Hart's stand up is funny. You know, I, more no, so his movies. I more than his movies. I think his comedies like his actual stand up. See, is that's funnier. the thing. Is like, okay, look, I think comedy has to be dirty. It has to be right uh, it, for me. You know, and Kevin Hart, like he is a funny guy. And I think in the Hollywood sphere, he's he's very good with what he does, movies, whatever, yeah. that sort of thing. His stand-up never really did anything for me. He doesn't really? get dirty enough for me. I mean, you got to watch his old stand-up. I mean, I suppose. Of course, like, after he became, like, this world, like, mm. superstar, you know, like, he has, like, an umbrella that he does have to, you know, like, take care of or whatever. He's yeah. talked about it where he's like, I can't say or do what I want to mm -hmm. because I have... An umbrella of people, family, friends, workers that I have to take care of. So, you know, he yeah. does like watch his time, I guess, in some parts of uh, his career. But his old stand-up, I think, is hilarious. Well, you know, that's one of the trade-offs, I think, when you make that leap from comedian to a movie star. Like, look at Eddie Murphy, too. Yeah. I don't even, I'm not even sure he really does stand-up anymore. I don't think so, no. I mean, when you may have as much money as he <clears throat> does True. and how much success you have in Hollywood, but you have to appeal to both bases, and it's just two bases that you cannot. Now, that's Dave Chappelle, though. He's not a, a, a movie star. You know what I mean? He's yep. strictly a stand-up comedian, so he has a lot more leeway. But, you know, I don't know if you <clears throat> if you know, like, what's what happened recently with all of his Netflix specials and all this drama that was going on. You know no, what happened, though? No. You know, so he, he makes jokes about everybody every race every lifestyle everything yes no filter <laughs> yep uh so he's the goat which he doesn't hold his tongue that's right and i i love it i don't i don't listen i have this thing where i'm like if i watch com com comedy comedians i think everything should be off uh, off limits or not off limits on limits you know what it is i think it's a lot of people are so sensitive mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you just got to take it for what it, what it is. It's a joke. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, that's why, like, I remember this this one thing that was really funny. So, Joan Rivers, God rest her soul, she was making these jokes about, uh, I can't remember, if somebody, like, who, like, didn't have an arm or something like that. And she was doing stand-up comedy. And there was a comedian, or not a comedian, uh, an audience member that heckled her for the joke. Hecklers, yep. And I thought it was really dumb and everyone was booing the heckler. But then yeah. Joan Rivers called him out and he was like, stand up. Like, you know, I'm going to say something to you right now. And he's like, how can I be ableist when I literally for years dated a man with one leg? She really did. And she, you, sure? you know, she, she was <laughs> like, don't ever call me an ableist because, you know, you got to be able to find like, you know, the, the silver lining in anything, you know what I mean? And I think her point is, is that there's a difference between joking at someone's expense right? versus just umbrella because, I mean, joking. Cause, cause you know what I mean? She's like living through that experience. Yeah. Right? Like she's like, she's married or dated, you said? Uh, she, was, uh, she was married, right. but her husband, you know, committed suicide. Oh, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? She's, she's someone that's like, had that firsthand experience with mm -hmm. someone who has actually like lost a limb. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, she, of course, like she knows like how to be sensitive and, you know, like be funny about it at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of people these days are so sensitive. I saw something recently. Um, A guy was like wearing like a poncho and like a sombrero mm -hmm. and he walked around a college campus. Oh, and, I know. I, yeah, and he was yeah. asking people like, what do you think about my outfit? Mm -hmm. He asked like, like a black person, an Asian person, a white person, Everyone was like, I don't think that's right. I think you're like culturally like appropriating like, you know, like like the Hispanic community. Like, what are you doing? And then it shows them going up to the, the Hispanic community, like five, six people. And they're like, no, we love it. We think like, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I've we seen think that. It's cool. yeah. yeah. So it just goes to show you, like, I just think people just kind of want a reason to fight nowadays. I wonder, it's so stupid. But like, I don't know where that comes from. I think I think it's because th th there's a word for this. SJWs. You know what that is? Social justice warriors. Social justice warriors. Or Karens, as a lot of people call them. Yep. You know, so uh, Karens and Kens. I guess that's what they call them. Oh, is that what the Karens name and Kens, is? Yeah. That, is that what a Ken is? I feel bad with anybody <laughs> with those names. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think people just nowadays, they want an excuse to get mad at anything. So for example, Dave Chappelle makes all kinds of jokes. We all know, we both know really well because we love him, right? Right. People staged a walkout. Employees at Netflix staged oh, a yeah. walkout because he was making 
jokes about the LGBT community, right? right? And they literally were so offended by it that they walked out of their job in protest of his special. Right. You know what I mean? And then they're like, oh, you should be able to joke about other things and blah, 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 blah. But Dave Chappelle never, ever, and most comedians, I don't know, there might be some KKK comedians that make really, really, you know, <laughs> jokes that, you know what right, I mean? Right, like right. in a real way. But um, <laughs> no, like, I think it really depends on where you're coming from. You right. know what I mean? And the thing is, is Dave Chappelle, he doesn't target only LGBT people. He doesn't target only whatever class of people. He targets everyone. He targets black people, white people, Hispanic people, gay people, straight people. He targets everybody. Yep. It's not, and it's none of it's done out of hate. So I think, you know, people are, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, it's about the narrative that you're presenting to the whole world. And I was like, but there's no narrative because it's a, it's a joke. Yeah, you gotta. You guys you, are making it a narrative. You yeah, know what I mean? the world is boring if yep. if you can't joke about anything. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, but the I don't thing know. is, like, I, I feel like a lot of that is taking place in like Western countries, like America, mm -hmm. maybe the UK. I'm not sure. That's yeah, that's true. And that honestly is like one of the reasons why I kind of don't want to go back to America as well, just because culturally it's so different now mm -hmm. than when it was like what it was when we were growing up mm -hmm. in America. It's just like, I feel like I would have to hold my tongue like so hard if I went back to America. Oh, and yeah. I, I just wouldn't be able to say anything. Forget about it. Because I don't want to offend anyone, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I think comedy should be left for what it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly that, comedy. Now, <laughs> there's something that I want to like <clears throat> put out to you here. Yeah. So everything should be off li uh, on limit, uh, not restricted, right? Yeah. If for a comedy. Yeah. So the only time that I'll disagree with you is like, for example, I think comedians have like this innate gift to be able to read the room of course they're very good at it yeah you know and you should be able to read where the temperature is on your comedy and what is appropriate at a certain time right um there are some instances where i would disagree with the fact that you should have joked about it for example gilbert gottfried who was the voice of the parrot on aladdin you right. know uh like a week after 9 11 oh. he started cracking 9 11 jokes like on tv <laughs> I mean, I'll that's <clears throat> that's a little, you know what I mean? He didn't read the room right. Like, like the wound is still too fresh. It's still too fresh. Like, you know, you could maybe joke about it later on, but like right now, one week or two weeks after 9-11 is a little much. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Like you, you have to be able to read the room. Of course. You know, I mean, like, but like in that specific circumstance or that situation, it was just, I think, a little too early for that yeah. joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean he, you know, he used to be the uh, the voice for that duck. Uh, Aflac, that, that duck. The insurance Affleck duck. I have no idea. Well, he used to be the voice for it anyway. Uh, I know the Geico. Yeah, no, that's a different energy. insurance that's company. Not, they're not paying us to plug them. Hold up. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so he, remember, was it 2000 and, I think 10? Right. 2010, 11, something when they had the, the tsunami and the earthquakes in Japan. Right. He he made like a joke about uh, the tsunami, the, the tsunamis that happened in Japan. And he didn't realize that Affleck, like, they're the majority of their insurance users were Japanese. <laughs> so he was the, if you were living in the States, like in the two thousands, everyone's going to know what the Aflac duck is. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'd, I'd know it if I saw it. Yeah. And, and basically he got fired from it. All he literally had to go in the studio and say like Aflac. And then that was it. And he got paid fat for it. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So you got to learn to read the room. And I think a lot of comedians or all comedians know how to do that to some degree. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still think like, like I was saying, like our goat, Dave Chappelle, the Mount Rushmore, the Mount Rushmore. Like, yeah, like he does, like he has like no limits on what he talks about, mm -hmm. but also he's not going to talk about nine 11, like a week after. You yeah. know what I mean? Like well, it's, it's all circumstantial. I think, mm, I, I think, I think honestly, aside from Dave Chappelle, but Dave Chappelle is very on the cusp of nineties and two thousands comedians because he's been around for a long time he used to have oh, the, yeah. the Chappelle show when yeah, I was yeah. in, like middle the school Chappelle shows the best skit show on planet it, earth I don't care what you say I see the clips pop up on Instagram sometime and it's so they're hilarious funny dude now, I don't know like because that, that was on TV right <laughs> it was on Comedy Central yeah and it wasn't stand-up comedy I mean I don't know I feel like people will get such a, get in such a tiff if that was released now I think but he's so yeah. funny anyway I, I I consider like 90s comedians like they, it was all unfiltered. I mean, we're both like 90s kids. Age. We know that it was different back yeah. then. Like it was just completely different. Even up until like the early 2000s, like maybe I would say up until like 20, like 12, I, I think it was a, like a little more open than it is now. Oh, yeah. 
it's I don't, I, don't, I give it, we we should do a whole conversation on on social justice warriors and this whole thing with yeah, political now, correctness. Now it's like now it's like eighty percent of what we were able to say when we were younger and like what we joked about. Mm-hmm. We can, we can never talk about that publicly anymore. Yeah, I mean you know you're open to evolving, but then like you know everybody gets offended by everything. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, I better just keep my mouth shut. Really, you know what I mean? Can't say anything. You know say one I mean? thing, it'll ruin your whole life. But um, yeah. Uh, you know who I do? You know who this? Do you know who Lunell is? Lunell, I she's from who. California, Oakland, but she's uh, this black lady that's a comedian, big lady. No, I have no idea. She's hilarious. What oh, about? Oh, you know who else I really like? Earthquake. Anyways, who's Earthquake? Oh no, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dude, yeah. Earthquake is so funny. Anyways, do you know? Do you, do you know who Monique is? Yeah, Monique. Yeah, you know, like from Precious. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I used to really like Monique too. She's really good in Soul Plane. If you guys yeah. haven't seen it, you should check it out. And also, we mentioned it last week. We, I, I, we both like Bad Friends. I really like mm-hmm. Bobby Lee and Andrew. Oh yeah. as well. Yeah. SNL and Mad TV. The, those two programs, they kind of went. They were kind of like rival programs. I think so. Yeah. Back in the day, I mean, obviously SNL kind of came up on top, but both of those programs produced some incredible comedians. Bobby yep. Lee, uh, Artie Lang, and all these people out of oh. Mad TV. On the topic of comedians, what do mm-hmm. you think about a? I mean, it's been a while, so I think we could talk about it. What do you think about a Will Smith smacking Chris Rock? Hmm. I think that whole family's messed up. Honestly, <laughs> like they all got problems. Oh, yo, you know, I when I was making this, I kind of debated if I wanted to talk about something like that. Yeah, smacking Chris Rock. I think Will Smith deserves to get kicked out of the Academy for that. Well, I don't know what. What do you think? Do you think contrary I mean, to what I believe? No, 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 no. You should you should never put your hands on anyone. He like, assaulted that man. Especially on like a live broadcast. Yeah. That's crazy. And Chris Rock's a comedian. And and, and they're J- friends. You yeah, know I, mean? I know. And so Jada like, Pinkett Smith. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm going over you. No, 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 no. And Jada Pinkett Smith, go ahead. And Jada Pinkett Smith, like she's a celebrity. She should know that it was a joke. And like, okay, maybe it was a little distasteful. But I mean, you know, you just kind of roll with it. And I don't know what... Uh, Will, Will Smith's Smith. thing. It, I mean, the thing is, when Chris Rock told a jer- joke, initially mm-hmm. he laughed. Yeah, that's what you I'm saying. You see him on camera laughing, and then like 10 seconds later, he walks up and smacks him, you know? Although at the end, Chris Rock got the better smack because, you know, he came out with his, uh, mm-hmm. his stand up and uh, he uh, tore Will Smith a new one. But, you know, I'm looking at that. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I'm thinking that relationship between Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith it's is healthy, dude. really toxic. Like, every, <clears throat> everything about that relationship, how she. How he totally got cuckolded by her sleeping with a, uh, what's that guy's name? The singer, August. Something? August. Uh, yeah, yeah, I forget yeah, his last name, about. but yeah, like. But she, like she said that like on like TV or what? Yeah, in like interview like while well, it was just them two. Yeah, it's like the where's the backbone? I was like, totally, oh my god, totally cucked, man. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's their relationship. We'll let them handle it. But yeah, um, I mean, it, it'd be like that. Yeah. Uh, this is just on the topic of uh, comedians. I, I love Chris Rock as well. On the topic of comedians, and I want to talk about Monique. I was talking about Monique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know in the 90s, she used to be like this really, really big lady, right? Right. She was a big woman. Right. Big, beautiful woman. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, she ended. She was always uh, preaching like, oh, like, you know, big girls love to eat and blah, 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 and all this stuff, right? And then she ended up getting diabetes <laughs> and then ended up losing all the weight. And now she preaches like a, a, a life, you know, healthy lifestyle and all that stuff. Right. And you, you heard about Ozempic? You know what that is? Ooh, nice little segue. You like how I did that? <laughs> Listen. You I, have been practicing. I have been. I have rehearsed this in the shower. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. Listen, no, it's all, it's all kind of put together. You know what I mean? All right. Ozempic. All right. Um, uh, I actually, well, we were talking about this off camera, but mm-hmm. um, I looked it up. Uh, I have heard about it. I, I'm just not very like well versed in the topic of Ozempic, <laughs> but apparently it's like it's like like you said like like a diabetes med. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a um what do you call it? Revolutionary drug, you know that is a lot of celebrities. It's it, I think it's kind of like an insulin shot. Like you know how it's like you, you put it you put it on every yeah, yeah, however yeah. however often, but um yeah it is like proven to make you lose weight. And there's been a lot of celebrities that do it. Yeah, yeah I was reading just I was reading about it like. 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago before we went on. Yeah, and then, like, some big names like, you know, uh, Chelsea Handler, uh, yeah. Sharon Osbourne. Even Elon Musk said he'd take the, like... He yeah, yeah. you've seen his pasty self at the beach before, and then now he's all kind of fit. I mean, he's not, you know, that yeah. fit. But anyway, um, and I'm pretty sure the Kardashians are. They, I don't know if they said they are or not, but I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah. Uh, so, like, like, the reason we bring this up is because, like, people are taking Ozempic, not mm-hmm. for, like, the diabetes aspect of it, but because... It helps with weight loss, right? Yeah. Which is kind of like, what do you think about that? See, 
they taking s- medicines for a reason that they weren't made for. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know so much about that, but all I can say is that I did look up, and it's been in the news a lot, that Ozempic has been, you know, confirmed by the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration. It has it? Uh, that it's safe to use. Right. But no, in no part of my mind, maybe it's me being paranoid, but no part of my mind thinks that losing weight like that can be safe. Like, I don't understand. It right. hasn't been out that long. It, I don't think it's been in drug trials nearly long enough. So, you know, the people, for example, when the coronavirus came out <laughs> yes. and people were like, you know, oh, we can't get the vaccine because, like, it hasn't been tested long enough and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, the vaccine trials and all that stuff. Right. I, to some degree, agree with that. Right. I mean... Yeah, dude, you remember like when the vaccines first came out, you were like, dude, they're like nanobodies. Like they're gonna track us. I did body. not say that. <laughs> what? They're, they're gonna track us, bro. Like, I was can't. on my phone. I was on my phone. In Korea, they had this thing where it, no, for example, no, if someone lie, doesn't show bro. up to their vaccination appointment, it gets canceled and then a spot opens up and everybody was trying to get it back then. So I was looking at that thing religiously, trying to get a spot. But no, anyway. bro, you're like, there are like nanobodies in it, bro. I never, ever, <laughs> ever did that. All right. <laughs> what I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, is I feel like Certain things should be tested more for like long term effects to see what it is, and right. I don't, I don't know how much testing they did on on this, but I mean, Lord, I don't know. I wouldn't do it. I mean, have you seen Sharon Osbourne? She looks like like the Crypt Keeper now because she's no so idea. skinny. I mean, but like like the COVID vaccine, like I think the reason why everyone took it so willingly was because it was a pandemic, right? People were dying mm-hmm. left and right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there was no option for us except you know take it or you know like you face the repercussions or the consequences, right? Because we didn't know what the repercussions and consequences were when COVID first came out. Listen, I had to go back to the States and I wasn't about to sit here until God knows when for this right. whole thing to blow over. So I was like, you know what? Give me the job. And then... Well, like Ozempic though, like like taking a diabetes medication to lose weight, mm-hmm. I feel like it's, it's like for me, I just wouldn't do that personally because there are other ways to lose weight, right? Listen... Like for COVID, there wasn't any yeah. other op- option except the vaccine. Right. Losing weight, get your ass on a treadmill. You know what mm. I mean? Like go take some steps outside, mm-hmm. run a mile or something. You know what I mean? Like dirt. Exactly. Diet. Yeah. You know, so I think, but thing is they say that how much, how much is Ozempic? Was you say a month? It was like 800 bucks or something? Eight something I read like for a month supply of oh it. Oh God. But the thing is you don't have to keep taking it though. I don't think once you lose the weight, I mean, isn't it kind of like you get off of it? I mean, I know because some people like wane themselves off of it, like celebrities, because yeah. they no longer need it. Like you only got so much, you know, weight you can lose. I was reading something like it, it like restricts like sugar levels or, or mm-hmm. something like that. I I don't know like the details, but still, I mean, like, is wouldn't you just rather just lose the weight naturally than have to rely on meds? Like, I that? think you know what I mean. I mean, that's just me personally. Listen, Kris Jenner's only got so many hours in the day. You know, she can't be on no treadmill. Although I think she is, because I've seen some episodes of Keeping Up the Kardashians where she does go on the treadmill, but um, it works out. But yeah. anyway, all I'm saying is, is, like, what happened to old school? Like, just, you know, get on the treadmill, go for a walk. I make 10,000 steps a day. I haven't recently, but uh, because I got a car and uh, walking. <laughs> Please, poor people. But um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, no, I mean... Really, get in the gym. Like you know, everything's so so easy to do now. Yeah, maybe know. maybe we're just old school. Like maybe we're just old minded in that way. Mm. Maybe like the world has advanced so much that you can just take a medicine without having to work out. Like who knows? But yeah, I, I mean, just personally wouldn't wouldn't do that. I think I think people just need to stop being so lazy and stop worrying about drugs. Yeah, and do, are doing the drugs. But like you know, you know what they say. You know, like like money buys comfort. So mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. Each his own, but I, I personally wouldn't do that. If I ever got overweight, I'd probably just go to the gym and run or mm-hmm. something. You know what I mean? Would you really, though? We'll Me? speak on it again. Have you gone to the gym yet? <laughs> I've not gone to the gym yet, no. <laughs> That's what but I But I'm also not overweight. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. Don't rely on drugs right. to you know, lose weight or anything else. And on that topic, <laughs> I went back to the States... <laughs> I went back to the States recently and let me tell you, do you remember like, was it December for Christmas? I went back to the States, right? Right. And let me tell you, I was shooketh (laughs) at at the state, the absolute state of the state of Arizona. Arizona. I could not believe what was, what I saw with my own two eyes. So a little bit of background knowledge here. Uh, This is a story. I went, I flew into Phoenix 
Arizona, right, to go to my grandparents' house, which is like a couple hours away from Phoenix. Oh, okay, okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay, and I remember, yeah. My dad. So I called my dad in advance. I was like, I was like, well, I land really late at night. It's going to be too late to drive all the way down to where my grandparents live. So my dad got me a hotel. Hotel. I say that in quotations. Hotel uh, in Phoenix by the airport. Hotel and motel I, holiday inn. Uh-uh, not even the holiday inn. It was a roach <laughs> motel. But uh, what do you call it? So <clears throat> I took the shuttle bus to this motel near my the airport. Right. I could not believe what I was seeing. I was thoroughly scared of what I was seeing. What did you see? Okay, so going in the middle, <laughs> driving this, going in the shuttle bus to this hotel, which had enormous gate. And all these like bars and stuff on the windows and stuff. It was really intense. Driving there, I saw the following. All right, make a checklist. Okay. I saw drug dealers. Okay. I saw prostitutes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I saw homeless people. Mm-hmm. I saw those same homeless people making a fire in a barrel <laughs> next to the road. And um, and I saw like all kinds. I got a burnt out car. It was insane. I couldn't Jesus. believe it. And I. I went, I got to the hotel and I was expecting, you know, like, you know, maybe it's like a, like a, like a motel eight or, you know, a holiday inn or something like that. You're right. And you ever seen Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah. You know, that one motel that they were like do, do shooting up drugs in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like. And I was like, Jesus. I called my dad. I was like, <clears throat> I was like, dad, what, what hotel is this? <laughs> and uh, I was like, I, I can't, I, 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 I'm scared. I go in there. I, I lock the deadbolt. I do everything. I didn't leave until the sun came up and I was starving. I was about to eat the napkin soaked in water. I was so hungry. Oh my but anyway, God. yeah. So the next day we're driving around, uh, going to go eat some burritos in, uh, you know, by the airport waiting for my brother. Right. That fentanyl thing that's going on over there Ooh, is out of control. Yeah. It is unbelievable. <clears throat> that is an issue that, you know, people that people actually care about. My Jesus God. Jesus Christ. Like seriously, I just driving down the driving down the street. It's I just bad. saw like people smoking in the street. There was they look like zombies. There was like some of them just staring at the wall for the whole time I was eating a burrito. Jesus, like which was like a good half hour. They were just staring at the fence, like at a, at a big tall wooden fence, like just out of the like, conked out. Like it was looking, like, looking like a The Walking Dead. Yeah, and and you know that's the, that's the thing is I asked my dad. I was like, well, there's all these people actively doing a very very a dangerous drug, you know, in front of, in broad daylight, right? right? And no one's doing anything. So I'm like, well, why are the police not at least going to try and say something to them? You know what I mean? They're all over the place. Right. And well, apparently the police have been defunded. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You know, there, huh. was, there was a whole thing about the police being defunded because, you know, I understand there was all like, over the states or during in, in, in certain states, you know, okay. it's because of like, you know, there was like, you know, big hubbubs about you know police brutality and um, there was a lot of unfortunate things that happened you know so the police they just don't have enough people to handle the drug problem and they don't have um room in prisons anymore so it's just caused like a huge problem i don't know like yeah i went there and i couldn't believe how far i don't know about other cities but how far the city of phoenix has fallen yeah i mean like the fentanyl like uh what do I call like an epidemic? I don't even call it epidemic. Like the fentanyl issue, mm-hmm. I guess. You know, it's like all over the states apparently right now. Mm-hmm. Um, even when I was in New York, uh, back in when did I go? September, October, something like that. Mm-hmm. It was they like me just walking around the streets. Maybe because it's just New York, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But there were like a lot of like people. Like there were drug dealers on the streets. You know, there were people drugged up. You could tell. Um, but I don't know if they were necessarily on fentanyl, but I think the drug issue in America is huge. Mm-hmm. It's always been an issue, but like it's gotten even bigger now mm-hmm. uh, with the, the rise of fentanyl. Um, I told you, right? When I got surgery for my wrist, um, I got out of surgery. I woke up <laughs> from anesthesia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, so they gave me like an IV and then I had a drip, right? With uh, like pain meds mm-hmm. or whatever. And um, they're like, if you press it, it'll give you a drop every 15 minutes. If, you, if you're in too much pain, press it. And I was like, you know, out of it because I just woke up from anest- anesthesia, right? So I was like, well, what is this? And they're like, it's fentanyl. And I was like, what? Well, <laughs> I guess so scared. I was like, I think fentanyl is like a useful drug if you use it for what it's supposed to be used for. Yeah, but yeah. you know, like if, in the, the right I amounts. Thinking, <laughs> I wasn't thinking that. It was just me, like, just like, like, I'd like dazed up. I was just like, mm-hmm. is this okay? And they're like, oh, yeah, like, it's fine. Like, we're like, we're hospital. Like, you'll yeah. be fine. 
But um, yeah, I remember they just gave me a scare. It was funny. But um, oh my god, fentanyl. I I, I don't think there's. It's like the crack epidemic of like the what was it the eighties? Yeah. yeah. Like, mm-hmm. what are you gonna do about it right now? See, that's the thing is, I think America has severely has severely failed its people <clears throat> in terms of drug education and drug prevention. Yep. Because when we were little, dare, dare. Well, I forget what it stands for, but there was that. Yeah, it was dare the dare program. Yeah, what about the, I'll it was at, uh, yeah. don't. Uh, anyway, look that up. But yeah, there used to be this thing called the Dare program, and starting in elementary school, we used to have like these assemblies for anti-drug, you know, education, whatever. But yep. from what I know, Dare no longer exists. Oh, really? Yeah, from what I know, I think I read that somewhere. I'm not sure. Ew. But I mean, clearly, even if it does exist, it ain't working because all these people are going nuts with drugs. I don't know. Drug abuse resistance education. There you go. That's what we need. And basically, you know, I was talking to my dad. I was like, "What can we do?" You know in America to kind of fix the drug problem is like, it's going to be generations because it's fallen so much and the education is so non-existent that, you know, and it's so easy to get too, especially now. Yeah. So like people think like, like it's fun to use it like recreationally. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. Like there's like a huge, like not even just like fentanyl, like huge, like Adderall issue in America right now. Like like prescription drugs is a problem. Like like marijuana is being legalized Mm -hmm. left and right. You know, like people are always like coked up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, what it's it's a huge issue, and I I also like I agree with you to some degree that it is like an educational issue, like where it's people are just aren't educated about it enough, but also it's it's addictive. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, no, that's, I think I think if you are an addict, which a lot of fenton- fentanyl people that do people that do fentanyl are, you need help. I don't think necessarily locking you up is the right answer. Right. I think. I think there's a lot of education that needs to go in there and mm. help assistance. Where they go to rehab. Or yeah, like you know what I mean. Be, like I'm yeah, sure, okay. I'm sure these people don't want to die. Right. Like they they want to live a life. Right. But you know, once you get tangled up in there and all that stuff, so rehab. I don't know. Yeah. I think I definitely think. Open up more need... rehab. Hmm? Open up more rehab institutes mm. in America. Try to or something. take me home to rehab, but they say no, no, no. no. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to watch. I don't want to like. I don't want to dump on uh, the drug problem in America too much. But uh, but America's famous for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, you know, it's glorified in media. It is glorified. in don't media. Don't glorify that, man. Yeah. It's, Everybody be it's dying over there. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we got to get on to our uh, our viral issues. our viral issues for yeah, today. You're so love this. <laughs> today, Joel has prepared viral issues again. Yeah. <laughs> Take us away. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, and like last week, I come with the sauce. Yes. All right. So Here I got go. I, I got these two. Here we go. <laughs> I got these. Two. Shut up. I got these two videos, right? I try to find some some shit that you'll love. All right. So watch this. This was kind of long, so bear with me a little bit. All right, let's see it. All right, here we go. Turn it over so I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Hey mama. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to eat right now, mama. Mm-hmm. That food look good. Yeah, we got a little restaurant. Yeah, the girl I was telling you about from Instagram that I met. <laughs> this Nia. Say, what's up, Nia? Hi. Yeah, this is the kids, right? Y'all say hi, kids. Hi. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is little Kayla. She's five. That's Timmy. He's seven. And this Sharice, she's 17. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. So what you going to be doing later, mama? All right. Well, let me just give you a call back later then. Mm-hmm. How the food is, kids? It's good. It's good? Look like your food good. You eating a whole lot over there. What's up, mama? What about you? How you feeling? Everything is good. Y'all think y'all gonna get something to go? Are you laughing? <laughs> Come on, now you. I'm sweeping the punchline. Just, let's just make sure they eat enough food. They good. I don't know. I, I may get a to-go box for the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get enough. Y'all, y'all make sure y'all feel like y'all paid up, all right? Yeah, so when you get you one, make sure you get me in one too. So when you feel me, I got okay. it. I'm going to handle it. All right. Let me run to the car real quick. Let me go grab my wallet. I'll All be right. right back. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like I know what you mm-hmm. do. Y'all know we ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up out of here. Y'all know we ain't doing that. <laughs> uh-uh, baby. I'm sorry. You can't get me. <laughs> it's not over. It's not over. No, nah, because we ain't doing that. <laughs> not this year. F- oh, man. Only play me like that. <laughs> Ain't even no broke ass. <laughs> feel me? But three kids? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> it was just seventeen. <laughs> Should be paying for me. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was. It's like this is our first date. How you expect me to just pay for three kids like that, man? 
Hell no. Nah. Come on, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't even play like that, man. Oh, my Come God. You, baby. I love videos Come like on, this. Man. Ain't no bro, but this, I'm just saying, <laughs> ladies, y'all gotta at least give a the opportunity to like, let me say, yeah, don't just do the just uh, expecting me to just, you feel me? I don't rock out like that. Baby, ain't no duck ass, man. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> play that Pay for your own food or you're gonna be washing dishes. <laughs> the hell you talking? <laughs> See, I knew, I knew you would love that video. Oh my god! So did you get what happened? Yeah. So like he, <laughs> he met a girl on Instagram. They went on the first date, and she ended up bringing her three kids with her. Yeah, and he had no idea. And she's expecting him to pay for her whole family. Uh huh. What meal. would you have done? Shit, honestly. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be politically incorrect. I would have done the same thing, although I probably would have left out the to go boxes. I'd be like, you know, I want to try. You know, at least you could. How many dishes you got to wash for that much food? Honestly. Oh, that's so funny. You was like, you guys want some to go? Like, <laughs> order more. <laughs> oh, but you know what though? Oh, that's oh, that's her bad. Though. Yeah, you got to be transparent about that. Come like, on. Like honestly, <clears throat> I understand oh, people funny. get divorced. That stuff happens. You know, you get it, but you got to be honest. You can't just drop it on someone and then hope that. <laughs> Hope that they do that. I mean, I've read stories on like Reddit that there was there was like a poll. It was like, ladies, have you ever gone out on a date just because you wanted food, with oh, no intention of going God. any farther than that? I've seen these polls on Reddit, and there's a surprising amount of them actually. That's messed um, up. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but this y'all want to talk about equality? Yeah, she, yeah, she's Jesus. so in the wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, of and then one daughter's seventeen years old. <laughs> he was like, she's seventeen. She should be paying for my meal. <laughs> I would have walked straight out too. Well, honestly, oh, that's so funny. I wouldn't even have let it come this far. If I walked in a restaurant on a date and suddenly there's like all these kids I had no idea about, right. I would have. I wouldn't even have ate. I would have just left. You know why? Because He's being petty. like, like it is like honestly, like to all the step mothers and fathers out there, like you guys are heroes. Good for you guys. But for me personally, I probably couldn't do that. Oh, no. I don't know. I I don't think I'd be able to ever raise a kid that wasn't my own. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if I was meeting a girl and she's like, oh, yeah, I have three kids, like one's 17, one's 10, and one's however, I'd be like, peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all have a good meal. Bye. Yeah. I don't, I just, I think maybe she was just looking for a meal. Honestly, I, that, that's what it seems like to me. She was like, I don't know about that. I don't know about no, any to go boxes, but I might get one. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe she was hungry. I don't know. I was like, where's this video going? He was like, I'll be right back. Let me get the bill. And I saw, I was like, I knew exactly where this was going. Oh, I love it. I love that. Oh, uh, it's so funny. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I knew you, I knew you would. I know Aaron's taste in, in, in just comedy. my, just my sense of humor. Like, <laughs> and you know, you know where I got this video from actually? Where's from a from? very unlikely source. So on Facebook, do you know who Trick Daddy is? Yeah. The rapper? Yeah. He has his Facebook page is so funny. He posts videos like this all the time. Oh my god. And they're That's... hilarious. Um, I'm definitely he's definitely one of my sources for this. Oh god. You. Speaking of comedians too, you know who's funny too? Who? 50 Cent. <laughs> what, what, why where is he coming from? Oh well, yeah, because you're saying Trick Daddy uploads like funny videos, right? Oh, so does 50 Cent. But all 50 the time. Cent just trolls people. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Nah, Anyways. I don't know. He's in a, oh, this is a good video. Look up Power on Stars. That's his show. You know, oh shout out God. to you, 50 Cent. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, that was the first one. I know you like it. Um, basically, so be transparent, ladies and gentlemen, about your <laughs> situation. Familial mm -hmm. situations. And here's, one, someone new. here's one that's just going to make you mad, <clears throat> okay. possibly. Let's see. Okay. Oh, man, that was, that was gold. Mm -hmm. All right, She's 17. Go. She's paying for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, watch this. This is Oh man, that was so funny. Buying two airplane seats don't fix my problem. Airplanes oh, are too small for big people. It's 2024. All these are changing. So planes should too. I won't lose my to fit on a plane. So give me another solution or just make the seats bigger. Okay, what do you think? Number one, she's not natural for sure. What? <laughs> Listen, not that anyone's looking, <sighs> uh, but that ass ain't real. Yeah, that no ain't a real way. ass. Mm -mm. That's, That's BBL huge. all day. BBL. BBL. What does BBL say? Brazilian for? butt lift. Oh, <laughs> Brazilian butt lift. Yeah, Brazilian butt lift. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I mean, okay, what, what did she say? Make the seats bigger because we're changing. Is that Bodies what Bodies are changing in 2024, and so should airplanes. Meanwhile, this this broad guy. Then make your own airplane. Yeah, why don't you? <laughs> what are you talking about? She'd probably or bounce get a, there if she jumped off of like a... Or get a private a plane. plane, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I mean... Is, I, I've always felt this about planes... If you're a person that's bigger and you're taking up two seats, you should be paying for two seats. Exactly. It's you not, pay for the space that you're using. Yeah, it's an economic, it's like, you know, it's financial. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? You listen, everyone wants to be inclusive and everything, and everyone deserves respect. However, in this case, her ass is big enough uh to fit in two seats. She wouldn't fit in one. Oh, Definitely yeah, no not. Way. Um mm. and clearly she's doing this for Instagram. Right. Or TikTok or whatever this wherever this came the from. The fact that she even made this video is like annoying. Yeah, and she's all smiling. She's like, Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> you know, all higher than now. But the thing is it's like off. Everyone's paying for the same service for the same amount of room. Mm-hmm. Why should you get two seats just because you're a little bigger? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For free. Yeah. If you pay, pay for, for the two seats, I guess whatever, it. dude. Yeah, yeah. You, you should be able to sit comfortably in two seats if you pay for two. Yep. You know what I mean? You should be paying for the amount of space that you're using yeah, like was, everyone else. There was another, There was another. I think, Instagram or TikToker that was like a, a travel vlogger or something mm-hmm. that like made this big thing about how, how oh, like – we all need to be respectful and inclusive and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Airplanes are. But from a strictly financial point of view, you know, you got to understand. The airplane, the airline's got to make money, too, where they're just going to throw away money to be inclusive. Like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's people are just entitled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This reminds me of the, that video we watched last week, that influencer. Who? The, the the restaurant influencer wanting free food. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people are mm-hmm. just so entitled nowadays. I mean, look at her. Who wears a who wears a, a tracksuit like that with their hair done and all that when they go flying? It's so annoying. I look like ass when I fly. Like, I just wear sweats. Yeah, I have glasses. I haven't yeah. shaved. Yeah, Aaron, <laughs> like, it's pretty bad. Aaron looks like he's on, on the cusp of uh, <laughs> like <a bum laughs> poverty. Go out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, I also want to say this. Can we, like, really just kind of kill the BBL, like, trend? I can't stand this. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess some people find it, like, sexy or whatever. For no. me personally, I'm just like, ugh. If you're, like, honestly, if you, okay, if you want, like, a little a little mm. something something to, like, you know, give you a little shape. Okay, that's one thing. But this, this is ridiculous. You can't even walk through the aisle. You know what you can do, though? You can do squats. Yeah, they, 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 want it, the, they want the jiggly. They want the... Ass to the grass. Uh-huh. No, no. You, know you, want that, you want that twerking, like, you know, the twerking ass with the with the, cl- the thunder claps and all that. Jesus <laughs> you know what I mean? Christ, yeah. No, is it? <laughs> no they, <laughs> listen. I'm so, yeah, I'm so sick of this. Like, I'm sick of seeing... I, I, honestly, well, living <clears> in Korea, I don't really see it. But when I'm back to the States, I saw it. I was like, my God. Oh, yeah. It's like... You because, thought Ozempic was bad. Yeah, because Oof. it's like so like like people, it's all over TV, you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's glorified in the States. I, I, saw, I saw some people in the States. You ever seen that movie, A Bug's Life? Yeah. Like, they look like an ant. Like the <laughs> butt was like super big. And then, and then, then, and then like the back is like yeah. huge. And like their, the hips are so wide, but you can tell like the ass eclipse the hips. So oh, like it just God. it just looks so unnatural. That can't be healthy either. I wouldn't I think I would. Well, assume. no, they have they have the things, you know, like so people they usually fly down if you don't have the money to get it in the states. They fly down to like South America, like Brazil. That's why they call it Brazilian, right? And there's some less than reputable places that do this, and then it'll pop in your ass, right? And then you'll get like poisoning from it, ooh, because whatever they put in there, I don't know what they put in there, but people die from Brazilian butt lifts. And I saw this thing, <laughs> I was like, they're like, oh well, the there's only like a one in ten chance that it'll go south, one in tenth chance of dying and get like blood poisoning. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's still like way too yeah. much of a risk. Like they have, they have other ones I've seen. Like where I saw this, uh, I was on Instagram. I think this lady like had a. It's like flat on one end, but then like the 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 butt part is like this, okay. so it'll sit against your right. your butt, right? And you can literally like flip it around to the flat side on oh. your ass, inside your ass, just by grabbing the skin and Ooh, pulling like it. Like you move the, implant? you can move it. Ooh. Now I don't know where they got that done in. Probably some some really That's crazy. shady. Yeah, dirty place, but yeah, mm, let's kill the Brazilian butt lifting, please. Yes, BBLs, and also, just if you're a larger person, don't complain about the size of the plane. Yeah, if you're gonna complain about it, do something about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Listen, Buy your own plane. Tall people, tall people can't help that they're tall, right? Exactly. And but they still have to do the exact same thing. Exactly. But the thing is, if you're like, let's say. If, if you're someone that's per se overweight and mm-hmm. you're complaining that because you're taking up two seats, you're like, why do I have to pay for two seats? Well, that's a lifestyle choice that yeah. you made. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless you like have an actual like thyroid condition. But even then. That's still. Like you said, like, rare, tall people you still know? have to pay for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you, you, you got the, the card that you're dealt in life. If yes. you're tall. Listen, I don't like economy <clears> seats. <throat> I am very uncomfortable being 183 centimeters. Very tall. I, I mean, you're probably very comfortable, but uh, yeah, me, me, shut up. <laughs> but me, uh, listen, it's a whole ordeal when I fly, but yeah. Okay. Whole, whole ordeal. You know what I mean? Ass. Like you're dealt, you're dealt uh, a card in life. 
you know, if you want, if you want to fly in one seat, up on that treadmill. But, Honestly, yeah. You know, go, you know, have a salad, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just saying, like. It's a lifestyle choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So. A little more fiber. <laughs> planes, you're paying for the amount of space that you're using. So, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think you should be paid accordingly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I don't want to be on no flight that has, like, all kinds of crazy balance issues because of weight. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, because honestly, like airplanes, airplanes are very delicate. Have you ever seen, you know when an airplane takes off? You can see the the shell of the airplane, like the the fuselage, you know, shake when it's like, you know, moving. It's very fragile. It has to be light (laughs) to fly. You're not almost flying a hunk of steel through the air. It's aluminum, (laughs) damn it. (laughs) I don't know where I'm going with this. But anyway, yeah, that was our five real issues. Uh, Next up, what do we got? We got the news. We got the news. Stay tuned in. Yeah. Okay, and uh, today in the news... We're no longer doing the news voice that I did last time because <laughs> I was cringing bro? hardcore when I was watching it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So, uh, you know, we kind of wanted to find some things that weren't, you know, uh, so serious. Like, I don't want to talk about Kate Middleton having cancer or, oh, yeah. uh, you know, whatever's going on in Russia with uh, Moscow and the bombings because that's too dark for this show. We want to have yeah. fun. Um, not that this next story is fun, but... <laughs> All right, let's listen to it. A teen is devastated after discovering his best friend of 10 years is a hired actor. You heard this? No, what? Oh, man, listen to this. A teenager has been left brokenhearted after claiming his best friend of 10 years was actually an actor hired by his aunt. Um, so basically, uh, this kid, uh, I don't want to say his name, but um, basically had some problems in school and stuff, and you know, his aunt kind of like was like, oh, like I don't know what's going on with him. Like, you know, we have some friends. So he basically, she basically made the situation where... You know, he would come onto the playground and, you know, play with like her. play with him and be friends with him. <laughs> They're in the same class. Uh, yeah. And then eventually through a series of different things and like a picture surfaced of this kid with his aunt and, and the kids, I think mom. Right. And, the, and the, the guy that it happened to, he saw the picture. He was like, how do they know each other? That's so weird. And then eventually it came out. That she was paying money to him to, to hang out with her, to hang out and be his best friend. Now, keep in mind, this started when he was five. So she hired a five-year-old to be. Yeah, he was an actor. He's an actor. Her nephew's yeah, best. He's friend. actually in acting. He does acting things. But he's five. Yeah, and this started in 2012, and went all the way up until like you know very recently. Oh my god! So basically, Aaron, you have no way of knowing. That I am not being paid to be your friend. Who would pay right you, now? though? Listen. Shut up. Um, <laughs> listen, I got my people. <clears throat> That's crazy, though. The aunt Isn't hired that pretty, a, pretty messed up? A five-year-old? That's like, for me, it's just the age factor. It's like, you hired a five-year-old to be your, your nephew's best friend? Mm-hmm. A I five-year-old. Mean, maybe she was worried about it. I mean, clearly she was. I mean, I'm sure, like, if I... if. If I was a parent and I had, like, a five-year-old kid and he was, like, a loner or whatever, like, i try to, like, connect him with other kids. Mm-hmm. But, like, I wouldn't hire a five-year-old actor. But you know what? At five years old, even, like, there was people I didn't like when I was <laughs> So what did she, she, did she, like, walk up to him and, like, hey, so little he got, boy, like, I'll pay you $100 a week to, like, I don't, they're, 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 her, 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 the aunt and the mom knew each other. Okay, okay. So I think there was something going on there because, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you're that young, though, no one is, like, caring about popularity and stuff. You're just right. caring about having a friend. And right. I don't recall anybody, no matter how annoying they were when I was in first grade, not having a friend. Everybody was kind of friends with each other back then. Right. And once you get into middle school and high school and you get clicky and you got popular kids and you got jocks and you got nerds and you got the whatever anime people. But, like, <laughs> no, I was, back then, anime was not cool. Back then, anime was for nerds, Okay. And I was big into Roroni Kenshin. But anyway, and Inuyasha. Hita Mitsurugi style, uh-huh, bro. Uh-huh. I was really into those two shows. <laughs> Hell anyway, yeah, I was a big legendary. nerd. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, now it's cool. Everybody likes Dragon Ball. But back then, all the nerds liked Dragon Ball. But anyway, we're, let's let's come back to the, the topic here. Yes. The poor kid, um, basically his whole existence is being put into question now. Because that's um, his best friend, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think the aunt was way out of line. Like, the, you know, you, you got to learn through these things. Like, you know, when you... Say, say, for example, you're getting, you know, you're getting, uh, I don't want to say bullied, but like, say you have someone that doesn't like you and they don't like you or you don't like them back. Like, that's part of being a kid, part of being a teenager, <laughs> learning how to navigate social settings, right? Exactly. Deal you, with people. You're developing your social like character, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? 
That's crazy that she hired. Like that's crazy to me. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe like he was hired at first, but then they actually did become best friends. Well, I mean, but from his perspective, and the side money was just good. <laughs> but her. from his perspective, he's probably like, "What so the hell? My dude? life like, is a lie." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you think about it. I feel bad for the kid. But yeah, um, yeah, he's not taking it very well. So he he made this big long, um, you know, rant oh, on God. A social media about it. But you know, sometimes I'm like this. I'm like, what if? I'm actually kind of a loser and no one's telling me. You know what I mean? Like, what if everyone's just like being my friend out of pity? Like, you ever thought about this? Like an existential crisis? No. Like, what if everything is not as it seems? You know? No, I've never. Like, what if I'm like actually ugly, but no one's telling me? I mean, I tell you all the time, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying. I tell you all the time. I don't, I don't believe you, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you just, <laughs> I, I can't believe you. As your not hired best friend, I tell you every day, bro. You can take it. Mom how and dad, you want, but how much money are you paying Aaron to be my friend? <laughs> be honest, because I know you're watching. Mr. Lane, this month's payment's a, a little late. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. But you know, it is what it is. Oh my god, this next, the, the next one is so funny. I'm all right. Let's listen to listen, it. I don't want to bomb on people, but like, you know what? I'm just, I'm, 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 this is an outlet for all of my rage with today's society. <laughs> okay, <All right. clears throat> let's listen to it. All right, so. <laughs> We got a we got a couple of real rocket scientists in our next story. That being said, um, this, these are both from the Mirror, by the way. Shout out to their weird ass news stories because they're <laughs> hilarious. Uh, okay, so I'm in love with a ghost, and my girlfriend accepts it. They both hang out together. Okay, <laughs> listen, listen. I told you these are weird stories. Um, meet the couple who spend their date nights at cemeteries and have a third individual in their relationship, a 300-year-old ghost. Okay, having date nights at cemeteries should be your first sign. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, after that, a loved-up couple has been inundated, sorry, I'm losing my English, <laughs> with judgment after opening up about their unconventional relationship online. Rebecca Carmichael is a professional ghost guide. Ooh... <laughs> but her otherworldly connection suddenly became a lot more personal when she met Rupert, Rupert, the spirit of a Welshman and a Revolutionary War soldier from the 1700s. What the hell? Come on. I now. mean, <laughs> oh, I ain't done yet. The American woman claims the ghost followed her home. Uh oh, one night stalker. Uh, and soon after, they got to know each other and slowly began to spend more time together. What the hell? She needs um, unexpected feelings grew between them and became a couple. But soon after, Rebecca did meet someone new in the living world, a fellow spirit social media educator Ooh, that's <coughs> title, uh, called Catherine, and the pair fell in love. Anyway, basically, he's in love with this ghost, Rupert, Revolutionary War veteran. <laughs> Oh um, but you know, and then the guy that she's meeting now, like a real life person, like, uh, no, they're lot. both women, first of all. Oh, they're women, uh -huh. yeah, they're both women. Rupert, no, Rupert's a man. Oh, you're not following the story, okay? One of them is Kathy. a woman, okay, okay, with black lipstick and red highlights in her hair. I think okay. that's the one that is the cemetery date lady, okay. And then the girlfriend <clears throat> is she, I don't know, looks relatively average to me, but um, that's... Rupert, I'm sure, has a handlebar mustache. Oh and uh, <laughs> military uniform. But uh, yeah, basically, um, they go on dates together. Triple a triple date? Uh, <laughs> I want to say like a threesome date, but <laughs> but it's like definitely That's... some kind of weird swinging situation with the otherworldly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I mean, does she have proof of this person's, ex this ghost's existence? So, so that's, the, that's the cool thing, right? I don't know how common of a name Rupert was in the 1700s. Right. But the thing about veterans is, is there's records. Right. Right. Um, it's not like she found this poor guy's uh, gravestone and like, Appreciate you know, okay, well, okay. Rupert, whatever. You can look this stuff up. The Continental Army has records of all their soldiers. So you can look it up. So there is actually records of a soldier named Well, Rupert. it doesn't say. Oh, it doesn't say. I'm okay. sure she just, you know, whatever. Listen, I don't even believe in ghosts. I know that's no popular because he does. And I don't believe in ghosts. So uh, this whole story is just fuck a mess to me. <laughs> it really is. It just is it's, it's a mess. Uh, a cocktail of shite. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. Like, Oh, that's funny. Like, you ever seen <clears throat> Scary Movie 2? Yes. Um, when Tori Spelling's character goes into the mansion and has like a very... Um, intimate scene intimate with the ghost. Scene yeah, yeah. With a ghost. <laughs> is that what you imagine? Yeah, well, kind of. But not really. <laughs> you guys should only look it up if you're above 18 because it's. I think it's rated R. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. I don't know what. 
I mean, first of all, the ghost followed her home. Shame on you for that, ghost. Uh, yeah, the... It, it, it could be real. You never know, bro. Ghosts don't exist. Now, this is my thing. I don't, I will not believe, I refuse to believe in ghosts. Until now, my mom one. yells at me all the time for this because she believes in ghosts. So, I won't believe in a ghost until I see one. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I feel a ghost. No, you just got gas. No, no, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta, you, gotta, you need to see, so, I need to see something to believe it. You know what I mean? I mean, the only thing that I can't see that I believe in is myself. <laughs> Everything else, I gotta see. You know what I mean? I mean... You ever seen a ghost? Well, we talked about this. Yeah, I have. I yeah. think. I think I have, at least. That wasn't a ghost. It was a ghost. It was for, a weather balloon. No, for sure it was a ghost. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it depends, I guess, honestly, on whether ghosts exist or not. Um, but honestly, this story to me seems like horse, <laughs> a lot of horse shit. First like. of all, one of them, one of them is a, a social media supernatural educator. It's got social media tied to it. So I'm thinking you put out a story and it gets on the mirror and then you talk about it on the Korean Cowboys. Ooh, exposure for my channel. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm paying you dust, lady. I mean, it seems like a little crazy to me, mm -hmm. but I mean, who knows? You know what? If you do want to see a ghost, though, you should play with the Ouija board like we talked about mm -hmm. when Brian was on the Brian. show. Brian. Uh, so I, I, I agree. If, I, if, if Brian comes back on, we're going to do a Ouija board. Y'all can film. No, no. Y'all can do it. It's called the Korean Cowboys, not the Korean Cowboy. It's two of us. Well, Brian could be a cowboy for that day. No, 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 no. Maybe two cowboys. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll be behind the scenes. But you'll still be here in I'll, the studio. I'll, I'll be in the studio, yes. I'll, I'll be behind the camera. I'm not okay. touching that board at all. No, no, suddenly it goes to air A. A R O N. Yeah, my ass. No. Nope. D I E. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe in any of that stuff. That's why I'm not afraid to do a Ouija board. And the watch, you're going to call me at like 3 a.m. that night. Hey, bro, I think somebody followed me. No, 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 no. But, you know, Brian, Brian, he believes in ghosts, but he does Ouija boards. So what's the, where's the beef? I mean, because I think, like he said, he wants to connect with the spirits. I'm someone that necessarily doesn't want to. I, mm -hmm. I just don't care about it. If I remember correctly, all you got to do is buy a Tesla because they'll be telling you where all the ghosts are. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. But, so, uh, uh, yeah, basically. This story is it's a bunch of horseshit, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Between the 300-year-old the three hundred ghost and Rebecca and Catherine and their strangely statutory relationship, that's creepy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not it's creepy. You find Rupert scary? Well, I mean, imagine if it was real. I'm saying if it was real, it'd be creepy, but it just seems, like I said, mm -hmm. like a bunch of horse shite. So, I mean, they seem stupid. <laughs> Listen, honestly, between, first of all, I would not be friends with someone that goes on dates at cemeteries. That's weird. Isn't that creepy? That's very strange. Like, I, I don't believe in ghosts, but I don't like being in cemeteries either. I don't, I really like. Especially at night? Like Hell I don't. Hell no. I, it's just just to know that there's bodies underneath my feet. Like that freaks me out. Like I don't like dead things. So yeah. like let alone a dead human. You know. And even though it's been you know they're gone for however long. Like that's weird. That is strange. Having the job of a social media uh, paranormal educator is also a strange thing. That's a weird job. Yeah. It's a, it, I mean, is it even a job though? I mean, social media is attached. It's a self proclaimed job. Mm -hmm. So I mean, do they pay into your four hundred one k and your pension? I don't <laughs> think so. But uh, yeah. Uh, Interesting stories. Yeah. You like the stories today? Oh, I, I like they better the stories. than last time. I, th I think these are a little more um, down your lane. Down my lane. Uh -huh. There you go, Mr. Mm -hmm. Lane. Down there my we lane. We'll continue with these weird stories. Yeah. In our I mean, next week, I, I can get it ready if you want next week. I don't trust you. All right. I mean, it don't matter to me. You're going to be like, oh, the, the, the tortoise is a straw stuck his nose. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It's going to be like about? some lame shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, today's episode, we got to wrap it up soon. But yeah. oh, our oh, that was dying. funny. <laughs> my favorite part was definitely that, that video. I knew it would. Of the guy ditching the I family. absolutely knew it would. <laughs> Shout out to Trick Daddy because I'm gonna be oh, getting man. some of my stuff from there. Don't follow him because I don't don't follow Trick Daddy because I don't want you to look at all, all this right, stuff. I won't look at Trick Daddy's videos. He, you should see the ones where people are getting evicted and then like, well, I did pay for the 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 rent. It's like, no, you didn't. You just bought a Gucci bag. Like it's, it's all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh my hilarious, God, that's funny. Yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah. So that was uh, today's episode of the Korean Cowboys. Listen, I'm loving this long form thing that we're doing. Yeah, I'm into this long form, long form content with. Mm -hmm. A lot of just shit talking. Mm -hmm. and like, this is right up our alley. So I love seeing Aaron laugh and smile. Because oh, before, man. before, we were always so serious. And, like, it was always so, like, you know, on, on, rail. on rails. Know, we keep yeah. saying on rails, but, like, it was. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, it was always, like, we always start, like, welcome back to the Korean Pop Boys. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And today, what are we talking about, Aaron? Take it away. And then we, we, we start go. like that. And, and then, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. You know? Yeah, but I, we just want to give you guys a glimpse of like mm -hmm. what 
how we converse behind mm-hmm. the camera off the off off the scene. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Obviously, like we're keeping it a little bit on the rails compared to how we would talk off camera. But oh, you know yeah. what I mean? It's still we we are being more raw mm-hmm. and more honest. I mean, Aaron didn't even drop a single f bomb today. I oh thought, yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Aaron's like Aaron's so color. Uh, I'll do it right now. Fuck. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> little forced, little forced. forced <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week with another mm-hmm. fun and exciting episode. I don't know what the topics are going to be. We don't know what the videos are going to mm-hmm. be, what the news is going to be. It's topical. It's a, uh, it, it goes on a daily basis. So yeah. Yeah. And if any of our listeners, uh, go on dates at the cemetery, you're dead to me. Like literally, you know? Yeah. That's creepy. Mm-hmm. That's a little weird. No more. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I guess we'll just say bye. Yeah. Here. We're going to do our yeehaw thing. You do you, you can do it again this week. We should keep it in. All right. Why not? Yeah, why not? Because like we're not even like dressing cowboy stuff anymore. We're yeah. just kind of bullshitting. So well, whatever. I kind of look like a cowboy. Do I not? Actually, no. You said I look like he Ash looks like Ash Ketchum. My ass. Oh, Pikachu! Look at him. You know how he does like the thing where he, like he turns his cap around. I wanna be the very best. I love that song. <laughs> that no one ever was. All right. Dun, anyway. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. See you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Korean Cowboys. We'll catch you next time. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yee-haw. Bye, everyone. Bye.